Hi everybody, happy August and welcome back to the Lawrenceburg Year of Stones and Crystals. A big thanks to the Lawrenceburg Public Library and the friends of the Lawrenceburg Public Library and certainly you uh, for expressing interest in checking your kits out for sponsoring and providing our Year of Stones and Crystals. I'm Carissa Hun Button from 7th Street Gifts. We're a small family owned and operated brick and mortar apothecary shop established in 1999. Uh, we're open seven days a week now with a staff of six, so uh, look us up online and make a trip to the city, to Newport, and bum around and enjoy our neighborhood and check us out. So for the month of August, our stone or crystal, and this is considered a true gemstone, if you refer back to some of our earlier, they would be considered a semi-precious or even some a mineral, but this is a gemstone, is peridot or peridot, however you would prefer to say it. Um, I don't really think the pronunciation is as important as being able to spell or recognize it. I pronounce it peridot because I come from... Um, a background with French Canadian and so lots of times our uh, T's are silent but I know Peridot is a perfectly correct way to identify and pronounce it. Um, so again the origin for the word uh, that describes our beautiful beautiful August birthstone um, comes from either Arabic or French and they think probably um, Arabia first and then it transferred across the oceans to Europe uh, to end up in the French meaning of peridot and that's how you would pronounce it in French and that word means gold but the origin is probably farida or farido and that word means gem so it was probably called a beautiful gem first and then got applied to the name French peridot since they're similar and then again it does mean gold and the green is kind of a goldish hue and other peridots do have um, more of a gold hint or hue than a green, particularly when you hold them up to the light. Um, so their color is usually a really nice uh, light translucent green to a goldish. And translucent would mean that you would just be able to hold it up to the light and be able to see through it, kind of like a piece of glass or a window. Um, and so that's super important in the world of gemstones. So the uh, transparency, the quality of the translucency, the way it picks up the light uh, determines the grade and the quality and whether or not they're going to cut or facet and turn it into fine jewelry. So the two things combined minerally are iron and magnesium and when those two are mixed um, in the chemical world that's what gives it its greenish goldish color. So the gemstones are formed really specifically with peridot and they're actually formed on these big kind of gray granite like rocks and then they're either chipped or cut off. Um, we have had at the shop before we've gotten raw like specimen pieces and they're these little chunks of I almost look like huge pieces of gravel and then when you look really closely you can see the little peridots like embedded in there. Um, and so that's how they come. You wouldn't get it from a big druzy or a crystal or a geode like our amethyst or um, some of our earlier stones or minerals. You would get these by getting huge pieces of like uh, the peridotic or the peridite rock and then you chip or kind of chisel off the little gems that are embedded in it. Now what's sort of special, not sort of, what is special about peridot and makes it different than many, many of the other things in our stone and crystal collection for the year is it's a finite resource. So that means that eventually planet Earth, unless another meteor shower comes or a volcano eruption happens, um, if things stay as they are, we will run out of peridot to mine or to find. Um, and that's because these are space stones. So similar to our tektite from last year, or last month I mean, or moldavite that we talked about, uh, peridot are only formed in meteorites or in very specific volcanic atmosphere and temperatures. So they have to have the perfect storm, literally, to be created and formed. And right now, um, there are just so many of them left, and plenty of them, but they're not an infinite resource. So they're not like fluorite and moonstone and other uh, stones and crystals that are continually being replenished and restored. So if you have some fine uh, peridot jewelry, or this one, really tuck it away, because it seems silly to say, but in just a few generations, it's a real possibility that we wouldn't um, have any more of these other than what was already circulating. So again, it is the traditional birthstone for August, 
And um, we have a lot of meteor showers right now under the sign of Leo. And my Leo Owen turns 14 this Friday. I'd like to say happy birthday to him. And so it kind of lines up, too, that we would have a meteorite or a, a space stone uh, for this zodiac wheel and the traditional birthstone because the night skies are filled with bright constellations and meteor showers almost every night uh, this time of year. And then just to touch on it again, it's similar to last month's tektite that we talked about, which is actually a meteorite formed glass tektite. And so our peridot is a true gemstone. It's not a glass, but it's very similar in the sense that it has to have a meteorite or remember um, a certain type of volcano, atmosphere, temperature, and setting to be created. Um, so again, as with the tektite and the moldavites that we discussed last month for our space stones, or our, our space glass, I should say, they are finite, so there are only so many of them, and what we have is what we have, and there aren't more being made or created. Um, so remember we had stone cages last month, and some of them were varied in size, so they may have been too small for your tech type, but you could use them for a previous uh, collection, or they'll be absolutely perfect if you took care of it and tucked it away for your peridot this month. And the peridot paired with gold, really silver or copper too, but gold is really stunning and it makes a very nice piece of jewelry. Uh, a lot of these could be wire wrapped or mounted in, like you can buy kind of the blank craft um, rings and then buy that quality gemstone glue and create some jewelry with it. And then one of our customers came in, Dennis, and he has gauges for his ears, like those stretched out holes, and they look really cool. He can totally pull it off. And his are kind of smaller, and I had never thought of this, but he bought two of these, and he popped them in his ears, and he wore them in his, like, his gauges, and definitely a look that not everyone can pull off, but it looked really, really, really cool. So it was sort of a creative and a neat way to um, use it as a form of like rough or raw or crude jewelry. And then your um, peridot is just a rough, raw piece. It's not cut or faceted. And remember how we've talked about the potential to um, tumble and polish, right? So you'll even see this one I can see has just a little bit of the previous stone in it. Because remember how they get chipped or, or um, faceted off of a big piece of rock that doesn't have all of the peridot through it? Um, and so this is it. They're probably about pea size, give or take. And um, you've just got a really nice, rough, raw, crude specimen of peridot. So next month will be um, September, which is hard to believe, right? The ninth month. And we're going to do sapphire. So they'll probably be raw like this. And we'll talk about the variations of sapphire, the qualities and the grades, and um, how they can be blue to purple to even other colors that oftentimes we don't consider when we think of that stone. So have a great August, uh, back to school. I'll see you guys next month for the beginning of fall, and thanks so much.